Okay, so the news today is that um, the British economy is now in recession. So I'm going to make this sort of short, simple, really accessible because um, there'll be people who maybe don't even know what this means. You know, maybe they think, uh, oh, a recession, that's just like hard times economically. And that's maybe about as deep as their, their knowledge and uh, analysis goes. So what is a recession? Well, technically, it's, uh, it's two consecutive quarters. So a quarter is a three-month period. So two consecutive quarters means for six months on the spin, without break, the output of the economy has decreased. And they measure this, uh, the output of the economy through this statistic called gross domestic product, or GDP. Now, straight away, people think, oh, that sounds hard. What, what is this GDP thing? Well, GDP, just put really simply, it's the total money value of all goods and services produced within a country over the last year. And we calculate the money value of all goods and services produced in obviously in cash terms, in pound note terms, if you're living in Britain or in euro terms, if you're in Finland or in US dollar terms. OK, so to calculate the total monetary value of, of all goods and services produced, you need to know two things. You need to know what quantity of stuff has been made, so how many cars, you know, because cars would be included within output, wouldn't it? How many loaves of bread? So you need to know quantity. But to work out value, you'd need to also multiply that by the price at which those goods were sold for. So GDP, it can go up or down for two different reasons. Either the quantity of stuff that we've produced has gone up or down. And then the second reason is maybe the price level has gone up, that's called inflation, or gone down, that's called deflation. So basically, what's, what, what, what a recession means is that the, they're supposed to adjust it for, for inflation. So they're basically saying, adjusted for the effects of inflation, the total amount of stuff being produced in Britain is lower than what it was. That's what a recession is. It's when output falls for six months on the spin without a break. So that's what a recession is. Normally, it's because um, output's falling, um, firms don't need as much labour. So during a normal recession, what you'll normally see is an increase in unemployment because firms won't need as many people if they reduce their output. So that's what, that's what a recession is. So one of the most important effects of a recession on people is that some people, some, some workers end up losing their jobs um, because firms aren't producing as much as they used to. Um, so Let's look at some other things then. So what, what caused this recession? Um, I think that there's basically two, this, two this, you can look at this from a short term point of view or a long term point of view. So let's look long term first. So over the last, what, 30, 40 years, the UK economy has been through a process called deindustrialization. So we've moved from an economy that produces things to the type of economy that you've got now in Britain, which is mostly about retailing uh, products, imports that have been produced abroad. So if you think about that, that structural change, it's not surprising that the UK economy is in recession because we've outsourced a lot of our productive uh, capacity abroad. And this has been going on for a very long time. Um, you know, one of the main reasons for that is being just globalisation. Um, so Brits, you know, you could argue that they've only got themselves to blame because what they did was 
rather than buying British products that might be slightly more expensive. What they did was that they bought imports which were cheaper and that just destroyed their own businesses. You know, the businesses that may, <clears throat> may well have employed them. So that's an that's, that's a underlying long run cause. Short run cause um, is basically, uh, I'm just gonna have to think about code words here. Um, if I say L downs, I think, I think you'll know what I mean. So basically what happened was that a lot of small businesses went bust because they weren't allowed to open their doors um, because the government made it illegal for them to trade. Meanwhile, uh, businesses like Amazon, Tesco, you know, and these guys, these are the ones that are often selling the imports anyway, they were allowed to do business. So, you know, another reason for this recession is um, just, just the economic carnage uh, that took place during the people's pantomime. You know, you also had um, all the inflation that was created by the money printing uh, used to finance, in the loosest sense of the word, um, paying 19 million people. That's, that's at its peak, 90 million people were getting paid 80% of their wages to do nothing. Did you notice at the time your taxes didn't go up? So guess where they got the money from? Answer, they got the Bank of England to print that money. So if you print that amount of money, and on top of that you've got the £50,000 bounce back loans, they were financed with printed money. You've got other dodgy stuff like uh, help out to eat out. So if you increase the supply of money and at the same time you're reducing the quantity of goods being produced via L downs, of course you're going to get more inflation. Imagine a game of Monopoly where each player got double the amount of money. Guess what would happen to the price of a hotel on Park Street? It'd go up. It's the same in the macro across the whole economy. You know, if you create more money without any without creating any more goods, then what you're going to get is inflation. So this is the other story. You know, we've had inflation now. Serious inflation. It always takes a bit of time for the printed money to cause inflation. But um, that, that chicken has come home to roost. And basically... A lot of Brits, their wages haven't gone up in line with inflation. They haven't gone up in line with the cost of living. For those who, I don't know, like really programmed, brainwashed, basically the cost of living crisis is down to the inflation caused by the money printing that took place during L-downs. That's what it is. It wasn't Brexit. You know, other countries have also suffered from inflation. Maybe not quite as bad as Britain, because maybe they didn't quite print as much money as the Brits did. Again, just think about this. Imagine how much money had to be printed to pay 19, 19, 19 million people 80% of their wages for the best part of two years. Ridiculous. So yeah, Brits, um, this is the problem then, is that most families have suffered a massive drop in their purchasing power. So of course, what then happens is that they, they can't afford to go to football. They can't afford to go to restaurants. You know, they can't afford to buy many of the things that they used to buy. So that will decrease the, say, the demand for goods in Britain. You know, I remember seeing this uh, video of some dude. Um, he went to see some business up up north, and they were they were making furniture in Lancashire, actually making it. But the problem is, is that there's not that many Brits who can afford to buy that stuff because because of inflation. People's wages haven't been going up enough to compensate for rising prices. So, this is another reason why we've got a recession. People aren't buying as much, so firms aren't selling as much, so they don't need to 
produce as much. You know, if you if you produce, carry on producing your current output, uh, when sales are falling, you'll build up stock of unsold products and you'll go bust, won't you? Because you've been spending money and not getting it back in through the front door, <coughs> through sales. So this is basically what's what's been going on. This is why you've got a recession. Now, the thing is, is that um, the thing to really, really watch out for now in Britain is whether uh, a cycle of cumulative causation uh, kicks in. Uh, I don't know, like a downward, a self-reinforcing downward spiral. Because I think there's a real danger of that. So if firms uh, cutting output, they're laying people off, there'll be less spending. So as a result of that, you know, the economy's likely to contract again, get smaller again. So more people will lose their jobs, less spending, firms cut output, recession gets deeper. The other problem that's facing the British economy is debt levels and we're not just talking here when people talk debt they they often talk about the amount of uh, borrowing that the government has done you know and this is bad because the government has to pay interest so to pay that interest they have to tax you that's where they get the money from so but the other the other debt issue here is mortgages credit cards for a very long time Greedy Brits, because that's what they've been en masse. I know not all of you have been, but many, 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 many Brits, they lived beyond their means. They Every single month, every single year, they consumed uh, or they spent more than their incomes and they got deeper and deeper into debt. And then you've got other phenomena like student loans, People didn't think for themselves. What they did instead was thinking, well, everyone goes to uni. I'm going to go to uni as well. And let's not worry about the 60 grand in debt. You know, everyone gets a new... If I don't get a new a new car, then um, people think I'm a loser. So people take out more, bet, more debt to buy to replace their three-year-old lease car with a brand new one absolute suicide and these these chickens are also coming home to roost so um basically this is a massive problem in particular for britain is private debt levels amongst households excuse me i'm going to do this in one take runny nose there it's quite warm today i think it's about um zero maybe plus one and then the other issue is a lot of companies are in debt, so they borrow to expand. And now they've got a problem because sales are falling. Um, their, their interest costs have, have gone up because interest rates have normalised. You know, it was never normal for interest rates to be close to zero. For the, and It's completely mad for people to just base important decisions on something that was completely abnormal so yeah uh what should you do as an individual um my main piece of advice would be if you have debt pay it off uh the second thing that i i would say is try to find ways of enjoying your life that don't involve uh spending money you know like a lot of brits i think oh you know I've got to go to Legoland, you know. Uh, I'll be a bad parent if everyone else takes their kids to Legoland. I've got to, you know. Two hundred pounds, or maybe more than that, two hundred and fifty quid blown on a day out. Or it's like, oh, uh, it's Valentine's Day, you know. Uh, I've got to show my girlfriend that I love her, so I'll take her out for some meal and get ripped off on some Valentine's menu you know it's just like wise up yeah that's what i would say to brits is like wise up um a lot of these social trends that you're blindly copying to conform and fit in not good for you 
Um, there's a guy, another YouTuber, he's, he runs a channel called Real Ale Craft Beer. He's a very nice guy, but blimey, he does some food reviews. And, you know, he talks about, I don't know, a new McDonald's burger that's like six quid or something, you know, for just like one hamburger or a packet of chili heat wave Doritos costing £2.50. You know, for me, no, having not really been back to Britain properly since November 2020, it's just like, it's just mind-boggling just how much inflation was created in Britain by the L-downs and all the funny schemes that happened. And then the other thing, I guess, as well, that I've not mentioned, of course, is um, the immigrant situation, people coming in illegally on boats, getting put, put up in four-star hotels. You know, you've then got <coughs> all the... Uh, the other people from countries who don't have human rights who come here, they put on a high vis, and then they police these destinations, don't they? And tell and tell people um, not allowed. You can't film here, and all of this. So, <clears throat> to be honest with you, it's not it's not looking particularly good in in the UK. I have to I have to say that. And um, for these people that say, I think James O'Brien, he said, oh, immigration, it adds to GDP. Well, I don't know what planet James O'Brien is on because, you know, theoretically, if you bring some people in and you put them in yellow hives and, um, you know, the government prints money and pays them a wage with it, well, then, like, you know, money GDP might have gone up because, like, a new service is being created called security or extra security services have been produced. And then they've been paid a wage, and the wage, I think, will be used as a proxy for the value of the security output. But, you know, meanwhile, in the real world, has anything of value actually been produced? I would say no. And then the, the, other, the other thing that's more shocking is GDP on its own doesn't really matter too much, I would say. What matters a lot more is GDP per capita, output per person. Uh, and basically what's been happening over the last 15, 20 years in Britain is um, GDP's been rising. A lot of that is just an illusion caused by them deliberately underestimating inflation. So what they've done there is they've kind of booked an increase in money GDP as an increase in real GDP um, when one hasn't taken place. And then the other thing that no one talks about really is what's happened to GDP per capita. Now, I, you know, you, you will know this. If, if, if you live in a country where output per worker is declining, <coughs> then what you're going to see you're going to see falling living standards and um, this is basically what's been happening in Britain. The output of the economy has been growing at a much slower rate than the number of people living in Britain. So on average, each Brit has become poorer. So this, this, this recession, you know, they've declared it. But, you know, in, in actual reality, I would say that ever since the financial crisis of 2008, the UK economy has been in recession. So that's a long time now, isn't it? So what do you call um, a recession that's lasted for well over 10 years? I'll give you a clue. It begins with D. And that, that, that word is depression. So that's what I would say. Britain has been suffering from an economic depression. The economy didn't go back to, to how it was pre-2008. Living standards have been falling for a very, 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 very long time in the UK. So, yeah, that's all I want to say today. So, uh, God bless.